Aaron, thank you Life Changing Services for inviting me here and thank you for coming because if you weren't here that would be no fun for me so I'm really glad you came really glad you came thank you thank you for being here today because of your time spent you will have a greater vision and greater clarity as to what's really going on you'll be able to recognize the enemy and his tactics far more clearly so I'm excited to share that with you I'm excited to share it with you because it is something that has changed my life I've been teaching Eternal Warriors now for four years, over four years, and in that time, I have given up my sugar addiction. It's been three years, given up my sugar addiction. I don't lose it with my family anymore, which is so wonderful. And moreover, I have increased in discernment and sensitivity. Discernment and sensitivity to my body, to the enemy voices, and to the Holy Ghost. And that is what you will receive today, is greater sensitivity and discernment as you practice these principles. These principles are powerful enough in helping with serious addiction recovery, but they are practical enough to help you win everyday battles. I am the mother of eight children, and we have everyday battles. Anyone here with everyday battles? Oh good, I'm so glad I'm not alone. Yes, we have everyday battles. And our guidelines today is to invite you to participate at 100%, to be present, to just really receive as much as you can and to give as much as you can. And we're gonna have fun. What are we gonna have fun today? We're, I'm sorry, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have fun. I totally gave you the answer twice. <laughs> I'm so glad you got it. Good, we are gonna have fun. Thank you, thank you. I want to start with this story. This just happened a couple weeks ago. Mother of eight children, I do a lot of laundry. Anyone done a lot of laundry? Okay, I begged my daughter, 12-year-old daughter, for two weeks to clean her bedroom. And when it came down to the fact that she had an appointment and no clothes to wear, it finally was enough motivation for her to do her laundry. She brought me three, to clean her bedroom, and she brought me three loads of laundry. So I washed her clothes and I even went the extra mile. I hung them up on hangers and put them on the shower rod to dry. That was a big deal. That was my gift to her. So all she had to do as I took them off the shower rod and passed them via courier of another daughter, she just had to receive them and hang them up. That's all she had to do. So this, we were set up for a win here. So imagine my surprise when I went into her bedroom and they weren't in the closet, and they were not on the bed, they were on the floor, on their hangers, right there on the floor. <laughs> Immediately, I chose in that moment to let that bug me. And suddenly I felt something. Anybody felt that bad? Well, I felt something, yes, yes, I felt something. And I will admit, I said something in an unkind tone. I, I know, I know. I said something in an unkind tone. And then I recognized what was going on. I knew it even before. And I left. What I recognized was I was seeing my daughter as the enemy. All I could remember was, look what she did to me. She had so much gratitude. I put them on hangers, and there they are on the floor. And I no longer saw her as my daughter. I saw her as the enemy. And I was getting all sorts of options of ways that I could make her life painful for a long time. <laughs> and when I started getting those options, whew, that's when I seriously ran. I could have run before because I knew what was going on. What was really going on was smoke and mirrors. A lot of emotional smoke was being stirred up. And I could no longer see things clearly. That's how Satan works. He's like this master magician. He hides behind emotional smoke. He hides in the smoke, and then he holds up mirrors. And he says, look at your daughter. Do you see that? What kind of gratitude is that? Oh, you should be so mad at her. She deserves that. She deserves pain. She deserves consequence. I'm getting a bear like, yes, yes, totally make her life painful. And then when it was all over and I ran to my bedroom, for safety, for my daughter's safety, there were more mirrors. Look at you, you're such a lousy mother. Did you hear that tone you used? Ah, you should totally hate yourself. You should fight yourself. Do you see how tricky that is? The smoke and mirrors. When you are seeing anyone or anything else as the enemy, that is smoke and mirrors. 
you are being acted upon. Anyone or anything else is the enemy is smoke and mirrors, the great deceivers at work. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's get to know our brain a little bit. If you want to play along, here's your brain. Here's your limbic system. In your limbic system, you keep your emotional responses, your flight or fight, your gut reaction. Your emotional responses are in your limbic system. What's in your limbic system? Your emotional responses. Awesome. Thanks for playing. Now tuck those emotional responses, tuck your limbic system safely in the middle of your brain and wrap your prefrontal cortex around it. And right here in your frontal lobe, that's where you keep your values. What do you keep in your frontal lobe? Your values. Awesome. Your values right there. And when you are whole brain, when your limbic system is safely inside, and those passions drive your values, you have power. You are powerful when you are whole brain. So go ahead and brain bump your neighbor and tell them, stay whole brain. Stay whole brain. Stay whole brain. Stay whole brain. <laughs> Just stay whole brain. When you stay whole brain, you are powerful. Absolutely. So what happens when we give up our power? When we get caught up in those smoke and mirrors, what's going on is that limbic system gives you a neural hijacking. You've become neurally hijacked. You've forgotten totally what you value. You act outside your value, gut reaction, and then later, when your brain comes back online, you say stuff like, I don't know what I was thinking. If I had been in my right mind, I never would have done that, never would have said that. Right? Now, there are times when a neural hijacking is very helpful. When a lion is chasing you, you run for your life. You don't take time to say, should, what should I do here? What's the best choice? No, but when you are, when you are uh, surrounded with smoke and mirrors, that neural hijacking will destroy the very things you love. Instead of taking you to a safe place, it destroys the things that you love. So what's really going on here? That's a powerful question, by the way. When you ask your brain powerful questions, what's really going on here? Then your frontal lobe's like, what, 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 what? You want an answer? Wake up, wake up, wake up. Come up with an answer. <laughs> what's really going on here? It's just smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. You guys want to program your brain for a minute? Just for fun. Okay, so ways to program your brain. Repetition or trauma. I really hope this causes no one trauma. We're just going to have some fun. So repetition with high energy will program it, program it really fast. You can have high energy in a negative or positive way. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have high energy, it's going to put it in there really fast. And we want to program our brains really fast. Really fast. We want to recognize what's really going on here. So we're going to play smoke and mirrors. I'm going to toss the ball, and whoever tosses it will ask the question, what's really going on here? Because it's never about what it seems. It feels like it, but it's not. So what's really going on here, and the person that catches it says, smoke and mirrors. And then we all say, clear the smoke. Are you ready? You want to play? <laughs> all right. What's really going on here? Clear the smoke. Toss it, toss it, toss it. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. Sorry, catch. All good. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. Clear the smoke. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. Yeah, we'll do two more. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. Thank you for playing. Ask me, ask me. What's really going on here? Smoke and mirrors. Clear the smoke. Awesome. You guys just programmed your brain. High five the person next to you and say, I'm a good programmer. I'm a good programmer. Good job. Good job. Can I use some of this stuff? Can you use some? I use your stuff all the time. All right, so when we program our brains, whatever way we choose, repetition and high intensity will program it faster. Okay, so that's, that's how the enemy is stirring us up emotionally. 
And it's never about what it seems. It feels like it. That's a clue. How do you recognize smoke and mirrors? By how it feels. Good job. How it feels. And when you see anyone or anything else as the enemy, it's a lie. It's just smoke and mirrors. Okay, so now that you know how you are being act upon, acted upon by what is not seen, let's see chemically, physio physiologically, how the enemy is using you, how he's acting upon you. The first thing that happens is you get a flash. What's the first thing you get a a flash. A flash can be anything. Something you hear, smell, taste, see. Some, suddenly a thought comes to your mind. It's a flash. It's a flash. In the story that I uh, shared with you, the flash for me was when I saw that laundry wear. Oh yeah, that was a flash. That was a flash. A flash can be anything. This first arrow is really powerful. Because this is the arrow of choice. What's the arrow? It's an arrow of choice. You are powerful. You have agency. You have the power to choose. And if you choose, the flash, the flash will take. Now, I want to make a little note here about this power to choose. This power to choose can be totally diminished when someone becomes a prisoner of war. They need help reclaiming that power. Their power's gone. Or if someone has experienced trauma like PTSD, or children under the age of 11, when they experience violence or are exposed to pornography, that can also diminish that power to choose because of trauma. But the cool thing is you are designed to heal. You are designed to heal. heal. That's good news. That's good news because even if you have lost your power to choose, even if you have experienced trauma in your life, or if you have become a prisoner of war, the good news is you are designed to heal. If I had had trauma to my arm and my bone was poking out, I would go to a doctor and he would put it in alignment and my body would heal. It knows how to do that. So when there is trauma in your life, or if you've become a prisoner of war, you need to go get help and get things in alignment. And when things are in alignment, then you can heal and you can regain this choice. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. For our purposes today, I'm referring to this as the power to choose. What's this arrow? It's the power to choose. Okay, and when you choose for the flash to take, something happens. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that could be a flash in the middle of a presentation, right? Okay. So if you choose, you get a chemical spill. What do you get? A chemical spill. Yeah, that brain suddenly becomes chemically altered. And when the brain becomes chemically altered, the next thing that happens is you start to feel something. What's the next thing you start to yeah. feel something? You know, your body is so amazing. There are neurons in your brain and there are neurons in the same kind of neurons in your heart, in your gut, all over. So once you choose for the flash to take, oh, we'll see if this works, you start to feel something. Difficult unwanted feelings and then the next thing that happens is your brain that wants to be so smart. What does your brain want? It wants to be smart. smart, totally smart. The brain starts looking in the filing cabinet. What have I done with this before? Just a vague memory. What have I done with this before? The brain is not asking, what is the best choice? The brain just says, what have we done before? And it pulls up that file, and that is our next flash. Bing. And this can go. Whoa! <laughs> it can go like that, like hyperspeed, and suddenly you are no longer in your whole brain. You are acting outside your values. This is called the satanic spin. It can happen a little bit at a time, or it can happen super, super fast. 
Okay, one question to ask when you start to notice, here's a tool, notice what's really going on here is to ask powerful questions like, what's really going on here? Look at you, you have good programming already. Okay, now when this begins to build, we can identify what's happening with us chemically by the chemical scale. Okay, I'm gonna zip the flash away. If I uh, first, we need to know how you feel when you are not chemically altered. When you are whole brain, how does that feel? When you are whole brain, you feel amazing. You feel loving, obedient, you get the best ideas, you're a problem solver, you have empathy, you can connect with people, you want to connect with people. This is your very best self. When you are at a zero chemically, it is your very best self and you feel great. You feel awesome. How do you feel? Awesome. Awesome. Completely awesome. Think for a minute. When was the last time you were there? How long were you there? Are you living there? Okay, code. This very best self, this is how it feels when you have the Holy Ghost with you. Scientifically, we could read what it looks like to be whole brain, to be integrated with your whole brain. And if we step back and just say, oh, empathy, great ideas, connected, do, 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 do. Holy Ghost, right there. Science has identified how it feels to have the Holy Ghost with you. Now imagine the spin that I just took down. Okay. Very best self, zero chemically. Imagine there's a little flash. And if you choose, you always have to choose. You get chemically altered and imagine a little cyclone right there. And pretty soon, your chemicals start to build, and chemically, you are no longer at a zero. You are now at a level one. What happens as you build? You get a level one. And one's not bad. One's not bad. It's just a little shift. It's just not amazing. It's just not awesome. It's just a little shift. Level one. Now imagine if you choose, and it's always a choice, the chemicals continue to build, you're going to recognize a level two by a feeling. How do you recognize level two? By a feeling. I feel, if you can fill in the blank, ah, I feel overwhelmed, I feel depressed, I feel sad, I feel bored. Bored is on the chemical scale. Now level two is tricky. You've got to watch out for level two because you can get false positives. I feel so good, I'm going to act outside my values. And I really believe that's where all immorality comes from. I feel so good. This feels so good. I'm just going to act outside my values. There might be exceptions to that I, that I haven't explored, but that's, that's my understanding. I just feel so good. I fall prey to this. Saturday night, I'm, I'm prophesying right now, Saturday night, 1030, my kids will come to me, my teenagers, and they'll say, Mom, let's watch a movie. <laughs> let's watch Pride and Prejudice. It's your favorite. It's only five hours. <laughs> and if I feel so good, I'll say, okay. And we'll totally act outside my values. The next morning I wake up and I go, ah, what was I thinking? Do you see how you can get a false positive? So how do you know if it's a false positive or not? Whether it supports your values. That's how you know. Okay, this can also be a place, in addition to a false positive, you can also experience a lot of pain here. You, the pain builds up and you're in a lot of pain, you need an answer. And the enemy is right there, ready to give you an option. At level three, you get an option. What do you get at level three? You get an option. option. Hey, I, got an idea. <laughs> I totally got an idea. If you just yell at your kids, all the pain will go away. If you eat the whole bag of Oreos, all of this will be better. Yeah, if you just turn on the computer while your wife's gone, you could make this totally better. Just masturbate. Makes everything better every time. Do you see the lie in this? Do you see the lie? Recognize the lie. We get here because of a lie. If we buy into the flash, 
you should feel, this makes me, those are code, those are code for lies, this makes me, that gives up your power. If you hear those words, this makes me so mad, whoo, just gave up your power. Okay, so a lie got us here, and now the enemy is offering us a lie to get out, right? It'll totally work this time. No, it's a lie! This time, this time. Now, if you engage in the conversation of should I or shouldn't I act outside my values, it's a stupid conversation. What is it? It's just a stupid conversation. Anyone here seen Studio C? Yes, okay, shoulder devil, Matt Meese, big fat shoulder, it's real, it's totally real. Yes, he is there saying, you should, it'll make it better this time. And we debate, and some people say, oh no, I'm just having this conversation with myself. I'm just debating this whether I should or shouldn't with myself. Okay, who are you? You're amazing. You don't have those kind of conversations. If you're debating whether to act outside of your values or not, you have engaged the enemy. And if you choose, and it's always a, a choice, it's always a choice, it comes back to that agency, because we're just that powerful. If you choose, and you, oh, let's see how tall I am, level five, just forget it. What happens at level five, just, forget just forget it. Do you see how the chemicals are escalating? Actually, we could take it six through 10, but there's not much to see, just a lot of acting outside your values. It's really ugly. And then poof, most of the chemicals wash out and you return to baseline, wherever that is. You have a baseline. I recognize this as I was doing lost battle analysis. Why on a day that I lose a battle do I keep recycling and lose more battles? Because I'm not zeroing out. Zero is a choice. Zero is a choice. It's, it comes down to power. Heavenly Father honors your power. He honors your agency. He will never take that away from you. But if you do not claim your power, the enemy will usurp it. To come back to zero, it's a choice. When the chemicals, after the crash, mostly neutralize, they'll come back to where you normally hang out. And you might, you might be at a, you know, a one or a two, that's not bad, just hanging out there. The one is pretty good. Or someone might even be at a level four, debating, should I, shouldn't I act outside my values? This could last for months weeks, days, and then suddenly they act outside their values and everyone says, where did that come from? How did that happen? Because they've been chemically altered. Now, and I wanna point out a couple of things to be aware of. When you are already chemically altered, if you are hungry or tired or hormonally crazy or in physical pain, you are already chemically altered and the enemy will give you the day off. No, no, he will not give you the day off. That's when he shows up and you are in his crosshairs. He's ready for battle and he's gonna take you out. And if you're already slightly chemically altered, you've gotta be ready and strategize, be ready for this. Okay, this is the chemical scale. We talked about the satanic spin, how it happens. Imagine, spin continues as we climb up the chemical scale. Questions about the chemical scale or the satanic spin, things we've talked about so far. Yes, Brenda. If you're clinically depressed, can you ever get to a zero? Absolutely, absolutely. Can a clinic, blah, let me try that again. Clinically depressed, chances are you've already got some chemical imbalance going on. So remember we talked about getting things in alignment? You might need to go see somebody. They might even give you some medication that would be appropriate for that. And once you put that on with your armor, that's just part of your armor. You know, people take insulin, just part of their armor, not a big deal. If you need that for part of your armor to help you neutralize chemically, yes, so yes. It's not Satan that is tempting you when, when you're, if you're chemically off, that's not Satan. You can just be off chemically, get balanced, and then he really is the enemy and not my brain. Yes, yes, good job, Brenda. Will you high five her? Tell her good job recognizing the mirrors. Yes, yes, but you have to also beware that because if someone has a tendency to physically, 
to be chemically off, mm -hmm. Satan's going to take advantage of that. He's totally, and he, he might have already been taking advantage of you, saying, look at you, you're the problem, you're the problem. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. Brenda, you're and amazing. You're, you're amazing. And if you need chemicals, right, to keep you in alignment, absolutely. Could you still have an off day and have a depressed day? Yeah, yeah, just life. Life can be challenging. That's what's so cool. The whole thing is about whether I can win the real battle in this situation or this situation or this situation. The real battle is to be your very best self. What's the real battle? To be your very best self. Or code, the real battle is to have the spirit. To have the spirit is the battle. You win that battle, you're going to win all the battles. Whatever you focus on, you will get more of. You get more of. That is the truth. Thank you. Can I have an amen, amen. on a Friday? Amen. Yes. Whatever you focus on, you get more of. Focus on winning the real battle. The real battle is the spirit. If you win that battle, you're absolutely, absolutely going to win the other battles. That's how it works. Okay, you guys ready for some fun? We'll have some fun. We're going to go outside and we're going to experience the chemical scale. All right? We're having a field trip? Yeah, we totally are. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. It's going to be fun. Come on, come over. I'll explain the, the rules here. We're going to play chemical scale. We're going to play with the enemy. I need a fearless enemy. You look totally strong. Will you be our enemy? Yes. Okay, and I need a fearless warrior. Let's be our fearless Parker. warrior. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm saving Parker. Oh. I'm saving Parker. Okay. Oh, Karen! Karen, you be... Okay, I hope your boots are cool. Okay, so our fearless warrior, this, this is the scale, by the way. This is zero. You're going to be on that side. You want to stay at a zero, and you win the battle. What do you have to do to win? You just stay at a zero. No big deal, right? But if you get pulled, oh, let's review them first. Level one is just a shift. Well, it's level one, just a, a shift. Level two is a feeling. Level two is a feeling. If you can fill in that blank, I feel, blah, right? Level three, you start getting options. What happens at level three? You get options. options. And if you debate the options, should I, shouldn't I act outside my values? Level four is a stupid conversation. What's level four? It's a totally. And level five, just forget it. And then you lose. Okay. So our warrior, Karen, is going to stay at a zero. No matter what you do, you just stay right here. Okay. Come on, adversary. Okay. Go ahead and pick up the rope. Now, this is what happens. If our warrior gets pulled over level one, the enemy gets help. This is all participation. It's going to be fun. Okay, so if, le if our warrior gets pulled over level one, the enemy gets help. What happens? The enemy? Yes, yeah, so you guys got to be ready to just we jump on. It. It's okay. She's going to stay to zero. But if she gets pulled over level two, the enemy gets more help. More help. If she gets pulled over level three, then more help. Do you see? Okay, you got this, Karen. You totally got this. Okay, the thing also, that, that would be death. You can't, this is your life. Okay, now the thing to remember is you never know when the enemy is going to start. You never know. The battles just happen. Oh. You never know when the battle's going to start. You just have to be ready anytime. Anytime. She's going to stay to zero. Ah! Okay, just go back. Go back to zero. You got this. You're just messing with her. <laughs> oh, she's over level two. Oh, come on, Karen. You got this. Oh, level three. Level three. <laughs> okay, okay, let's try this again. Let's do this again. Was that a fair fight? No, can someone help her? Yes, can someone help her? If you can get help as the warrior, if you ask. You cannot get help unless you ask. So what would be some tools, what would be some tools 
that you could use in this kind of a battle. If I'm teaching eight-year-olds, they will tell me swords and spears, <laughs> but we have to translate that. Let's translate. What kind of tools do you have to win the real battle, which is to have the spirit? Reading. Okay, so you could call out reading. Okay, you don't want to cross this line. I can say my prayers. You can say your prayers. Okay, so if she calls out weapons, you can get on to help. She has to ask. Okay, same scenario though. If the enemy, when well, you never know when the battle's gonna start. You never know when the battle's gonna start. And if the enemy calls out, I don't know, what kind of weapons does he use? Tactics. Drugs. Drugs. Lies. Fear. Lies. All right. <laughs> that would be smoke and mirrors. <laughs> All right, let's play anytime, whenever the battle starts. God, prayer. Prayers. Prayers. My husband and my children. Do I help? Call out. Oh, oh, you won, Karen, you won. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, we're going to play this one more time. Parker, you can come anytime. That's my role for you. Yes, yes. Your role is get on and help. Okay. If you remember when Alma, Alma was the prophet, Captain Moroni and his men were fighting Zarahemna. And at the point when the Lamanites came into battle and they saw the Nephites all in their personal armor, Captain Moroni, well, Zarahemna was like, we're getting out of here. And then Captain Moroni sent men, he sent spies to talk to Alma. Alma was a prophet and prophets prophesy. So Karen, just as Captain Moroni used a prophet to prophesy and strategize, if there's anything you want to do to strategize the battle before it begins, you're welcome to. Okay, let the battle begin. Okay, before I start the battle, I really need God to come and help me and my family. I need them to know that I can Okay, she's them. calling out weapons. Uh, I also need my scriptures. And I need all my camera pockets. <laughs> Karen, can I offer can I offer some ideas? <laughs> As, as an outside, like the Holy Ghost here, right? Yeah. And, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. Um, is this where you want to be in the battle? Uh, no. No, no, no. Okay. No, I would rather put somebody in the I'd rather be back there behind Thank you. You are a good sport. All right, let the battle begin. You never know. Oh, come on, come on, you got this! <laughs> awesome, good job. Good job. Let's go back in and we'll talk about this. All right, let's, let's talk about what we just experienced. With our fearless enemy, what is your name? What's your name? Dave. Dave, thank you Dave so Dave. much. Dave, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's talk about our experience. What did you notice? We played this three ways. What did you notice? Karen, what did you notice, round one? Well, I just noticed that I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, I wasn't strong enough, I wasn't prepared, I felt silly, kind of stupid, like, what am I doing? I'm not quite sure what we're doing here. Wow, you weren't ready, you felt silly, you felt stupid, and what are we even doing here? I'm not quite sure, yeah. Wow, thank you, thank you. Other things you noticed? weren't trained. No, no training. Love it. David, thank you. Once you knew what was going on, then you could form some strategies. Okay. Enemy, what was your experience out there? Well, it was a lot easier when there wasn't everybody else on the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. There, it's a lot easier for the enemy. And when it's the, just and the farther problem. he had him down, and the more people joined his side, it was easier even more. She didn't have a chance. Right? Did you, did you guys catch that? The further along the chemical scale, the harder the battle becomes. It doesn't mean that it's lost. You can, you can get help anytime, but it becomes more challenging. Comments, things you noticed? I thought I saw a hand. Yes, Brenda. He always has help, though. The enemy he, always has help. He always has help. Mm -hmm. And he could have called out help. 
fear, pain, uh, overwhelm, discouragement. And we could have had a lot more help on that side. Okay, so the enemy always has help. What about you? What about our warriors? Do you get help? How do you get help? Choose. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. Choose, and you have to ask. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. God honors your agency. There are angels just waiting. Let me in, let me in, let me in the battle. I'm ready for this. But if we don't ask, they can't come. Any other ahas or connections you made during this experience with our tug of war? Uh, just one thing is, when you said, can I just give you a suggestion at the end? I think I never even considered, you know what, all these people should go before me. Like, they should be a shield for me. They should protect me. And so that, since I know the enemy's really, this is my rope, he's after me. If I make sure that I'm the last target that you get to because I put all this in place, uh, that was really insightful to me, that I can put them in front of me. Because I think often we just think, I'm so awesome, I can just do stuff until I really look like a mess, then I'll go get some help. Then I'll get help when I really need it. Yeah. When I really need it. <laughs> no, we need it down here. Right. Because you are awesome. You're especially awesome with help. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Not I can do things, all things on my own. It's all things through Christ. Yes? I needed the reassurance that, you know, a skilled enemy who's been in this game for a while, he'll propose a game and then pull you off your line before you know the rules. And then you're falling forward on your face. But when you combine the skills and talents and the chemical scale with the atonement that says, even though you fell on your face, you get to start over. You get another chance. And you don't have to have that burden of what happened last time. Then I get more skilled every time. And I can call people. Like she got faster at calling for help and faster at putting herself in the right spot on the rope. And then, but we remember that then he'll change the game. Then he'll start a new game. And then he'll pull you onto your face. And then you have to do it over again. Okay, new game. Now I've got to start over again. Okay, I fell down, but I get the atonement again. And I get to be cleaned up again. I get to learn all these strategies again. And then he'll propose another game. But that's okay. With them, we're really good, like a, de a decathlon person for our lives. And, and we're good at lots of games. Oh, yeah. And so, but we don't have to slay there in the mud because we got pulled into the, into the mud pit in the middle of one of the games, okay, just because he switched games on us. So mm -hmm. I remember I never dealt with anxiety until about three years ago. I lived my whole life with no anxiety. And that was my first experience with that. I don't, I don't have one of the anxiety battle. I've never had one of those before. And so in my 40s was my first anxiety battle. And so that was a new game for me. I don't know what to do with that. Okay, but other people, oh, done that one whole life. So you, you can switch up the game, but you get to do the whole thing all over again. That is good news. The good news, bad news is if you've lost a battle, bad news, you get to play it again. Good news, you get to play it again. This time you get to strategize. What did you learn from last time? Step back. Okay, I see what happened, totally. I'm going to be at the end of the rope this time. I'm gonna, and how, how was the battle oh, that third time? I was barely aware that it was going on. <laughs> barely aware that the battle was even yeah, going I was on. Yeah, so powerful. Yes! That is so awesome. What Karen just did for you, this power pose, when you put your physical body in a position like a power pose or chin up or smile, shoulders back, that tells your brain, oh, things are good, neutralized chemicals. <laughs> How cool is that? You have this incredible tool. You just walk around in it all day like it's normal. And if you claim your power, just something easy, shoulders back, chin up, smile. In fact, they've done studies. They've done studies that they put people under stress and hooked them up to biofeedback measurements, right? And they had them do a stressful study, biofeedback off the charts, very stressful. Then they had people come in and smile while they did the study, hooked them up, biofeedback, a lot less. Then they had people come in, hook them up to biofeedback, gave them a chopstick, had them put the chopstick in this way, not this way, this way. <laughs> so it's far back enough that it lifts your cheeks and your eyes. It didn't matter how they were feeling. Their body was in a response of feel-good mode, cheeks up, eyes up, and it said, ooh, brain, things must be good, neutralized chemicals. And their biofeedback was under that same 
How cool is that? You have, a, you have a powerful weapon. It's your body. What's your weapon? It's your body. It's awesome. Plus, you get all these other tools. All these tools. Yes, David. He, I know it's, you know, he, he doesn't fight fair. He's a, he's a cheater. And, and the scriptures say he's a liar from yeah. the beginning. So lying is cheating. So he's a cheater, and he, he, he fights dirty. Yes, he does. But the Savior uh, knows how to handle him. Totally cast him out. Don't wait around and play games with this guy. For sure, David, thank you. And thank you for your testimony of the power of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. It is only through him that we have power. It is only through him. Our souls, our bodies, the, the uh, spirit and the body is the soul of man. Our souls were bought with a price. Yeah. Thank you. We had talked about some some really important principles and tools that we've identified today. Just understanding these things, understanding how the enemy is acting upon you, understanding that, thank you, gives you power to act, to claim your power. Okay. Um, things that we've talked about today. The, the satanic Spin. Let's review that. What's the first thing? The first thing there's a flash. And if you choose, it's always a choice. Okay, and we've talked about the exceptions and if people have lost their power to choose, but it can be restored. That's good news. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you choose that flash to take, then you get a chemical spill and you start to feel and then your brain looks through the filing cabinets what have I done with this before and that's the next flash all right awesome awesome high five the person next to you say I am so good at the spin I got that I got that okay then the next thing that we talked about is as the spin builds chemicals increase we can identify that on the chemical scale. How can we identify that on the chemical scale. scale? And when you are at a zero chemically, you feel awesome. How do you feel at a zero? You feel awesome. But if you choose for the flash to take, recognize a level one by just a shift. Good job, just a shift. It's not bad, it's just a, it's not amazing. It's just a shift. Okay, chemicals continue, builds up to a level two. You recognize a level two by a Feeling, I feel. If the chemicals continue, choose to continue, you recognize a level three because you get an option. Brilliant, hey, brilliant ideas. Not. You get an option. This will totally work this time. And if it continues, level four, you engage the enemy. That would be a stupid conversation. Totally stupid. Yeah. Look at the person next to you and say, I do not have those kind of conversations. Never. I not <laughs> and if this, the spin continues, chemicals increase, level five, just forget it. And we totally act outside our values. And then we come back down to baseline. Unless you choose, you could totally choose to be at a zero. That's awesome. Okay, so those are the things that we've talked about. The just understanding this, being able to recognize what is going on gives you power. Being able to recognize, that's a tool. If you can step back and notice what you're noticing, what actually happens if you've been neurally hijacked, when you step back and notice what you're noticing, the frontal lobe, like what, 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 wake up. That is a frontal lobe activity. That wakes up your frontal lobe. That's a higher level thinking to notice what you're noticing. So being able to recognize. What do you want to do? Recognize. Recognize. Okay, I'm going to, two things. Uh, I'm going to invite you to create a list of strategies. This is how you win. Read the Book of Mormon looking for strategies. It's awesome. You're going to totally win some battles here. And also, well, let me try another one. Make a list of tactics 
enemy lies. What is he using on you? Is it smoke and mirrors? Is it discouragement, overwhelm, apathy, bored, physical problems? What, what is he using? What is the lie? He's really good at that. Okay, strategies. I want to identify some strategies that we've talked about today. What's the first one we just talked about, Just You've got to recognize. recognize what's going on. Herein is the genius of the spin and the scale. The spin and the scale help you recognize what's going on. Here are some powerful questions. When you ask your brain powerful questions, it will wake up. What's really going on here? Powerful questions. What are some powerful questions? What's going on here? Yes. Powerful questions. What's really going on here? And we programmed that. What's really going? We program that into our brain very intentionally, not what's going on here. We want to know what's really going on here because it's never about what it seems. It might look like the laundry. It might feel like the laundry, but it's not about the laundry. The real battle is to have the spirit. To have the spirit is the battle. You win that battle, you win all the battles. All the battles. Okay, enemy tactics, smoke and mirrors. Other powerful questions. Diffuse. Diffuse. Wait. Other powerful questions. Oh. <laughs> Where have I seen this before? Where? Ooh. That's a good you know that that could be a powerful question. That could be. Where have I seen this? I haven't thought about that. I've thought about where have I seen this before? As in, oh, what have I done with this in the past? So I've associated. I have associated that question with a filing cabinet. But you might have associated that question with stepping back and notice what you're noticing. And then that would be a fantastic question. Okay, how am I feeling? This is a really important question because again, we want to step back, notice what you're noticing. How am I feeling? This will increase your sensitivity and discernment to the spirit. How am I feeling? I feel amazing. I feel fantastic. I'm at a level Woo! Zero. zero. I feel awesome. Or I don't feel bad. I don't feel amazing. That would be a level one. You can train your family by teaching them the chemical scale and then you ask them, how are you feeling? You want to ask them at times that they do feel the spirit so they can say, wow, I feel great. That's the Holy Ghost. That's what we're going for all the time. Or other times when you know that they're on the chemical scale and you ask them, how are they feeling? I ask my children, how are you feeling? On the scale, where are you? And they'll say, I don't know. Well, then it doesn't really matter, you're on the scale, right? But it will practice that increasing the sensitivity and discernment to the spirit, to your body, and to the enemy. How am I feeling? Here's another powerful question. What is the lie? If you see anyone or anything else as the enemy, there's a lie. If you see yourself as the enemy, there's a lie. This, or anyone else. Or any, anyone, anything. It might be money. It might be time. It might be the laundry. It might be pornography. You might see pornography as the enemy. Is pornography the enemy? It's one of his tools. Smoke and mirrors. Whatever you focus on, you get more of. The real battle is to have the spirit. To have the spirit is the battle. Any other questions, comments? You have been armed today with some beginning information that you can start to recognize what's really going on here. And it's never about what it seems. The real battle is to have the spirit. And at any point, any of those arrows, you can make a different choice. At any point along the chemical scale, you can ask for help. You can set yourself up for a win. I know that. I absolutely know that. 
and it takes practice. If you want to increase quickly in your discernment and sensitivity, you can have greater practice. You could enroll in a life-changing services course, an eternal warriors course, a 12-week course where we practice the principles, we return and report, we talk about lost battles, okay, what happened? What was the lie? What was really going on? Okay, now let's strategize next time. Where's he coming? What are you gonna do to be ready? Because you are set up for a win when you strategize with the Lord. All right, we are going to experience something really awesome just as a final, okay? Just as your brain can become chemically altered and shift your world, you can take charge, step into your power, and neutralize those chemicals. And one way that we do that is warrior chemistry, stepping into the fight. I'm here to fight. And you can do that with your body. You can use that with use your words. There is power in words. One of my favorite declarations is from 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul didn't even know about the satanic spin, but he totally knew enemy tactics. And he also knew how to align himself with the Savior and win. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you feel that power? All right, let's say it together. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, now let's use our bodies. I'm going to invite you to stand up. We're going to say it like we mean it. We might even say it a few times. The people on the third floor might just hear us. That will be fun. Those are the angels. <laughs> the second floor. All right. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let's do it again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, now like you really mean it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Last time, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because you are powerful. What are you? Powerful. What are you? Powerful. You're almost convinced. You are? Powerful. Yes, you are.